Hello, my name is Jim German, and welcome to today's episode of Dulimanjaro. Today I'd like to do a little review on my 3D printer here. So this is a Creelty Sane Smart Ender 3 3D printer. I've had it for about a year now, so I wanted to give a little review talking about what over that time period, what I've liked about it, what's gone wrong, what's worked really well, uh, and kind of just give you an overview of the printer itself. So this printer was one of the cheapest printers you can get. It's a little uh, under $200. You can get it from all tons of different places. Like I said, mine is branded as Sane Smart. Um, I've seen them with different brands on them. I don't know if they're all coming from the same factory in China, different factories. It's just the one model that everybody stole and keeps using. I'm not sure exactly what's going on there, but mine's a Sane Smart if that ends up mattering. So when you get this printer, it comes uh, disassembled. It's a little kit. You just have to put it together. It comes with all the tools you need. It comes with the um, Allen wrenches to put the screws together. It also comes with some spare parts, which is really nice. It comes with a couple of spare fasteners, uh, a spare nozzle. These nozzles that uh, it prints through actually do wear out over time, so having a spare one's pretty handy. It comes with a little pair of clippers and some nice little filament to get you started. You can see I haven't ended up using mine yet. Um, and pretty much everything you need, it's good to go, except for you really do need a, a larger spool of filament um, to, to get going. So setting it up is very easy. It takes about a half an hour. Uh, there was nothing, no issues. The instructions were clear. Um, everything went, to went together well. It's mostly just putting some bolts in and tightening everything up, and then it all works fine. The only issue that I've heard of people having is the bed. You have to level the bed so that it's in the same plane as the print head. Um, there's little thumb wheels down here to adjust that. I've heard some people had a lot of difficulty getting that to work. Um, I think I must have just gotten lucky. It worked out really easily for me and I haven't had any problems. You do need to redo that every once in a while to, uh, it seems like it, the, the wheels kind of slip over time. Um, so you do need to do that, but it's not a big deal to do. So I really do like this printer. Uh, it's very inexpensive. Um, at work where I work, we have a couple much more expensive printers and they don't seem to print in any faster or enter higher quality. The only real benefit that they do have is they have two extruders that let you print either two colors or uh, a dissolvable support material, um, things like that. But those printers cost in, in two or three thousand dollars a piece, uh, whereas this one's about two hundred dollars. So this one is definitely a much better value for money uh, and I've had a lot of success using this. So the things that you can do with this pretty much anything that you can imagine. So it's somewhat limited on the size of pieces that you can build. You can see for this project that I was working on, um, I ended up having to split it into two pieces here. And but you can do that fairly easily. I ended up just bolting this together just because that was really easy to, to, to do and design. You could get a little fancier and make little snaps or little dovetails to uh, lock these two pieces together. You can always do that if you need a bigger model. Um, but most of the things that I've been printing, uh, this little adapter for the bridge port here, they don't, you know, most things don't need to be very large at all. Um, so they fit very nicely on here. So some of the upgrades I've made to the printer, the first thing I did, um, when you get the printer, it comes with a little micro SD card that you use to transfer the files from your computer into the printer. But I couldn't be bothered to be walking back and forth and swapping the SD cards out. So what I did was I hooked up a, a Raspberry Pi here and put a piece of software called OctoPi on there. And what that does is it allows you to connect from your computer to the 3D printer. So the Raspberry Pi plugs into the 3D printer and then it can control the 3D printer. And there's a nice web interface. You can do it from your phone, from your computer. You can send the models over that way. Um, and if you hook up a little camera to the Raspberry Pi and then you print out a nice little support for it, you can then watch your prints as they're printing so you don't have to keep running and checking on this um, as, it, as it's going. You can hook that up so you can see it over the internet, but I haven't done that because you don't necessarily want some random person to be able to find the printer and control it you know, without you being there. Um, that's not a great situation. So that's mostly what I've been doing with it. Um, I can print pretty much any material. I'm not sure about the flexible stuff. I haven't tried that yet. It may need some rejiggering of the, the path from the extruder to the hot end to, to be able to support that fully. I've done, this is PLA here. That's the kind of the most common. It's the cheapest. It's the easiest to print. This part here is made out of uh, ABS, which is a little bit stronger. Um, it's a little bit more durable, but it does require higher print temperatures and it's a little more finicky to print with. I didn't have too much difficulties. I cranked up the settings to some recommended, you know, temperatures and, and fan speeds that I found online. Um, and it was able to get a pretty good print. I did have a, a little bit of a problem with some cracking here. Um, the ABS shrinks a lot as it cools. So as it shrinks, it tries to contract. And then since, you know, that it's, it's pulled between the two spots here, you can end up getting some cracking. 
Um, I think if I fiddled around with the settings, I'd be able to get that to work out pretty well. But as it is, this you know this is actually pretty useful. This was a case for a, a, another project that I was working on with a little Raspberry Pi and a display on it, and it ended up working really well. Uh, the like I said, the ABS is, is stronger, but the PLA is still pretty strong. Um, this is a part that I used to, with the bridge port to raise and lower the thing manual uh, with a, a drill instead of having to do it manually. It's got these teeth here that engage on the bridge port. There's a fair amount of force that are going through those. Um, I printed this pretty with a 80% infill, and I haven't had a problem with it breaking or anything. It seems pretty strong um, and has worked quite well for me. So. I don't know that you necessarily need to use the ABS. Um, I have heard that the PLA will break down if you leave it outside, or the ABS is a little more durable that way, um, but I haven't experienced that myself at all. You can also print the PETG uh, filament. I haven't done that. It's supposed to be kind of in between the two. It's a little, it's easier to print than PLA, but it's a little bit str more stronger and more durable than PLA, so that could be another option as well. So I've, I've found, I've had great success with the PLA, and as you can see, it comes in lots of different colors. There's black, there's blue, there's purple, um, this kind of pink clear color. You can also get filaments with carbon fiber mixed in them for even more strength that are extra black. All sorts of different things are available. So what don't I like about this printer? Well, there's two big things. Um, the first is the, the extruder here that feeds the plastic through into the hot end that then melts it and extrudes it onto the print bed on mine ended up cracking. So the way that works, there's a little stepper motor in here that's controlled by the brain box. It's got a little geared tooth that will sit right next to this little bearing here. And there's a spring that clamps this together and that geared tooth feeds the filament in and out. Uh, it takes a fair amount of pressure actually to do that. So this is pretty tight on here. And what ended up happening with this plastic piece is this the support around the, the bearing here cracked and therefore it wasn't putting enough pressure on the filament the filament wouldn't feed correctly, and I ended up with a print like this where some of the layers weren't really connected because there wasn't enough plastic there, and it just has no strength, and you can just kind of peel it apart, um, and so that doesn't work really well. The biggest problem with this is that it took a little while for me to diagnose, um, and I ended up losing two or three large prints because of that, so it, it cost a fair bit amount of money. I ended up replacing it with this aluminum piece here, which is obviously much stronger, should never have any issues with it, and it was only about $10 on Amazon. So I really wish that from the factory, this came with a metal piece here instead, wouldn't add that much cost to the, the printer, and would alleviate not just the fact that it, it broke, but that you could end up wasting you know, a fair amount of money in filament uh, when the prints fail. So I think it wasn't, it's not actually that the, the plastic isn't necessarily strong enough. I think the tolerances on this little brass bushing that's pressed fit in here uh, probably aren't sufficient. It was probably a little too tight from the factory. And so there's uh, stresses on there to begin with and that ended up cracking it. Uh, so I really wish that they had, you know, spent a little bit more money on the extruder here. If you have one of these, I would highly recommend you just proactively go out and replace this. Then you won't ever have to worry about it. And it's not very expensive. The other issue that I've had is that the, uh, on the little, uh, brain box that runs the whole thing has all the stepper motor drivers all that sort of stuff in there There's a little fan that sits in this little uh, cut out there After about six months or so that fan started making some noise. I guess one of the blades started hitting the, the grill on it um, So I took the cover off took the fan out Like I said, it has the stepper motor drivers in there. that do get fairly hot They do have little heat sinks on them So I didn't want to just get rid of the fan But I was able to just lay it on top in such a way that it didn't interfere with anything. It was still blowing It's probably not as efficient because it's you know just kind of blowing air everywhere um, but hasn't been a problem since. It may decrease the longevity of my board, so I should probably do something about that in the future. The only other thing that I've upgraded on this is the print bed here. So this, uh, it, from the factory, it comes with a plastic print bed. Um, I switched out to a glass one, mostly for aesthetics. It makes the, the first layer um, nice and smooth on the bottom instead of a little, a little textured. Um, so I really like this. It's not an expensive thing. I don't think it's necessarily necessary, but it's worked well for me. The only thing is to get the prints to stick to it, you have I at least use a glue stick, just run the glue stick over the area, and then the prints stick really well too, which is another nice benefit. Um, I've also heard you can use hairspray and there's some specialized products that would also work for that. So the, that's the only other upgrade that I've made for it. One other problem that I've had with this is that one of the axes started slipping at some point. Um, so you can see this, this should have been a nice straight line going down here, and as it was printing, it lost steps going in one direction here. So as it printed, this kind of got shifted over and then shifted over and shifted over a little bit as it kept going up to print. This was just a prototype, so it ended up not really mattering. Um, however, that you know is obviously gonna cause you to have problems with your printer. 
I don't know what the cause of that was. Um, I suspect it may have been, at least I hope, that some something had gotten gummed up on these rails here. They are exposed, so uh, and these, these little rollers ride on top of them. So if there's some sort of chip or dirt or gunk on there, it's possible that then it couldn't roll over that and it would get stuck. Um, I'm hoping that's what it was. There does seem to be some some plastic in the air that, that ends up depositing on here as the thing prints that it will build up over time. Uh, and so I'm just hoping that's what the issue was. I cleaned everything really nicely and since then I haven't had any problems. Um, so I don't know that it was anything else. I can't imagine what else it would have been, but that was another issue that I did have. So I would suggest making sure that all these uh, rails here that it rides on stay clean as you're, as you're printing. Um, so at the end of the day, is this the, the printer that I would recommend you get? Would I recommend that you get a printer at all? I think the question is, what, what do you want to do with the printer? Um, if you just want to you know, get parts that somebody else designed off the internet and print them, probably not the best idea. Um, if you just want to do that, there's, there's cheaper ways of doing it than going out and buying your own printer. There are services that you can uh, you know, get to print stuff for you, or you can even go to the local library and stuff. They frequently will have 3D printers that you can use. However, if you want to design your own parts, you want to make stuff, you want to make a special box for your, your own little you know, Raspberry Pi or other computer, um, it's great for that. Other little things that you might have that you want to build, um, I think it's a really nice option to, to play around with. Is this the, the best printer to get? I think it's one of the best options out there. Uh, there's It's it's the very lower part of the price range. There are a couple that are a little bit cheaper. There's a couple uh, $150 ones, uh, maybe a little bit cheaper than that. but they have very small print volumes. They're kind of, instead of having a nice you know, box frame here, they'll only have just a single arm that sticks out, so it's not gonna be as rigid. And I don't think they're worth the, the cost savings for that. You don't save that much money and you're much more limited on the, the size of the prints and the quality of the prints. Um, now, at the higher end, you know, these 3D printers will go up to you know, tens of thousands of dollars or even more if you talk about the metal 3D printers. Um, but I don't know that there's a whole lot of benefit for that. The, like I said, the biggest benefit of the more expensive ones that I know of is that they have a, a dual print head so you can print two different materials. Um, you can upgrade this to that. You'd have to replace the main board here. You have to add a, a bunch of stuff. You know, it costs you probably $100, $200. But there's kind of limited benefits to that. Yeah, you can do multiple colors. There's uh, fancy print heads that'll actually mix different colors together. Um, being able to print the dissolvable support material that can be very useful but i found that in general the um the the most recent upgrades to the software that the way it prints the support material actually come off really easily and in most cases doesn't leave too visible uh, a mark when it comes off so i found that to be really useful um, i don't know that you really need the dissolvable support material unless it's something very specific that you want and like i said those printers t tend to start at you know two or three thousand dollars so if you buy this one and then you decide, well, you really need that, like I said, you can either upgrade this one or you can, um, you know, just resell this one and then go buy a more expensive one. I don't think it's a case of you're, you're throwing away money by getting something that's cheaper. Um, there is a slightly improved version. There's a pro version. Uh, it depends on the prices when you're getting, when you're looking at that. It's got uh, one of the axes, I forget which one, is a little more rigid. And it's got a couple other little things. That's probably worth it. It's not, I think it's like $20 more expensive most of the time. So that's probably a little bit better uh, value. But in general, I think this is an, an excellent printer to get, particularly if you're just getting into it. Um, you want to design your own parts and things. I think this is a, a great printer to have. It's been pretty reliable. Like I said, I did have some issues with it. So you've got to be willing to kind of tinker with it. If you want something that's just going to you know, go right out of the box and never have any issues, you want something that there's going to be somebody that you can call if you have an issue. Right? This one's made in China. There's no support for it. Um, although there is a ton of, because this is such a popular printer, there's a ton of forums online where you can get lots of help there, but there's no official tech support number or anything like that that you can call. So if that's the kind of thing you're looking for, I would suggest getting a different one, but you're going to pay a lot more for, for that support and, and that uh, you know, slightly high, higher quality level. So thanks for watching. If you have any comments, uh, if you've had any problems with yours, uh, let me know in the comments below.